Thank you very much for having me. I assume that you all uh, have developers or at least interested in that development. Yeah. And we all know the classic like web applications, right? We have a server, we have a client, the client goes to request data from the server, so we purchase the data. He gets the data as, I don't know, XML or JSON, right? Nowadays. And this is like the normal behavior we have in a normal web environment, right? The client gets all the data, I guess, the data back, and that's it, right? But wouldn't it be nice if we would be able to, like, stream data to the client? What if the server wants to tell the client that there is something new? Right? So now the client doesn't take the action, but the server does take the action. Right? And this is exactly what I want to talk about in the next 15 minutes. So I'll welcome you to my talk ASP.NET Core, Single R, and Angular. Right? We want to combine those techniques. So, first of all, what is Angular? Angular is a client side framework where you can build apps. Right? It's a rich framework, it's huge, you can use it for modern web applications for business applications, you've got everything in it like dependency injection, right, and services and separation of concerns and stuff like that. So this is kind of cool, but this is only the client side, right? If we're speaking from the server side, we often hear ASP.NET Core in the Microsoft environment. Who's working with ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET right now? Two guys. Oh, three guys. Okay, grand. Who has heard of it? Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Now, because it's like an awesome technique, right? Um, in the past, it was very like heavyweight, right? But now with ASP on the core, we are very lightweight. We can build web APIs, which are really, really great to build. They are fast and uh, they are really, really quick when you, when you implement them. So, this is the back end. But now, I want to speak about Signal R. So, what is Signal R? Signal R is now with ASP.NET Core 2.1 baked into ASP.NET Core, so you get it with the complete ASP.NET Core, and you can use it to inform your clients something happened, right? So SignalR is nothing else than when your apps require like high frequency updates. Then you can use SignalR just to inform your clients that something new happened, right? And it's not bound to Angular, but today we will take a look at ASP.NET Core, SignalR, and Angular together. But before we start, um, I have a few slides here, and after that we'll take a look at a little small demo, right? And then, I think the 15 minutes are over then, uh, my, my rehearsals are tiny and quite well, so hopefully that's enough. So before we start talking about signal R, let's talk about the transfer first, right? So how does the server get the data to the client without the client asking for it, right? You're just breaking the normal web behavior right now. And signal R is great because it's like an umbrella technique, right? So normally, if you think of the server wants to invoke something to the client, right? Or the client wants to invoke something, you think of WebSockets. And signal R can do that, right? So signal R negotiates for you what is possible. If WebSockets are possible, this is grand, this is good, then you're doing WebSockets. Otherwise, it will fall back to service and events. Right? And you do not have to care about that. So Signal does that for you. If that does not work, service and events, it will fall back to long poly. Right? So WebSockets is like a sockup channel where the one sends in and the other one gets out. Right? Service and events are like the name says service and events. And long poly is like okay, it's like poly, but it's like the client is asking, Do you have something for me? No, 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 okay, I'm stuck. Do you have something for me? No, 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 okay, I'm stuck. That's one part, right? And if you use SignalR, it covers that for you and it negotiates automatically with the server what can be done. So it goes out to the server and says, can you do WebSockets? And the server says, in the best case, yes, I can. So grand, let's do WebSockets. Right? And if the server says no, you fall down those service and events and long part. So how do we get started in code? Because we're all developers, I assume. How do we get started in code? So this is like a startup file if you're using, oh, kind of, not the right format, but it's okay, I think. Uh, this is a startup file which you have in every ASP on the core application, normally, right? And this is where you configure your own application, so what you use and how you use it, right? So you're pulling everything in what you want to use in an ASP on the core application, and after that you tell it how you want to use it. And here you can see 
that we're adding signal R to our services. It's like a fluent API, right? So you tell the API, okay, I want to add signal R to your box, to your toolbox, actually. And after that, you say, okay, please here's signal R, and we are configuring it. And here we tell routes.maphub, so the class is generic, to a specific route, in this case, to do R. This is a route. <coughs> So what is a hub? Right? This is a hub is just a base class that we can derive from it. A hub is like the pipeline that allows your client and server to call methods on each other. So you absolutely need that if you want to establish a connection with signal R between your server and your client. Right? And this is how a hub can look like, right? It's a public class chat hub that we derive from hub. And on that method, uh, on that class, you can define methods which can be invoked from the client from JavaScript. Right? Signal is not bound to Angular, it can be used in any front end framework you want, or even a plain JavaScript if you do that. If you kind of mess up your status, it's plain JavaScript. Right? So, all these methods you define here with its parameters, it can be invoked from the client, and then you can broadcast this message when you say clients all send async and receive the message, right? And this is where signal broadcasts to all connected clients, right? And you can even register on events from that hub. So just think of you did like a chat application and you want to display the message user one, two, three, just join the channel. Then you can register on the unconnected async or on disconnected async if the user leaves that whole thing, right? Just think of you want to display like you want to do a game or something, or you want to display the latest documents. And your boss is driving home, and you said, "Okay, I just I just uh, save that document, and then it automatically comes up to the list your doc sees on the smartphone, and then you can automatically do it." Right. So this is what these hubs are for. You can broadcast something, and this method can be evoked from the client. Okay, so that's that's the server side. That is really what we have to do on the server side, if not more. So what do we have to do on the client side? And once again, this is not bound to Angular. This is working with plain JavaScript as well, right? So first of all, what the ASP.NET team or the ASP.NET Core team did was they offered us, or they're providing us, an NPM package, which is awesome. But there are two packages around right now, right? There's ASP.NET slash Singular, and there is a package called ASP.NET Singular dash client. The client one is updated, right? It says a message. It's not getting, uh, it's not getting worked on anymore. You should use that package. So we can install it via npm. We can do npm install at ASP.NET core at ASP.NET slash Singular, right? And then we are in a normal, in a usual Angular environment in our TypeScript file, and then we can import everything what we need from that package. In this case, we're importing the hub connection and the hub connection builder. And after that, you can say new hub connection builder with URL. And this URL is exactly the URL your API, your backend is running on, concatenated <coughs> with the hub route we just mapped in the startup class. Right? It's exactly that. So here we are just targeting the hub class with the hub route we just defined in our startup.cs. And after that, we say it builds and we get back a connection. So that's basically it. Now you establish the connection, well, nearly. The next thing we can do is we can say to that connection, okay, on a specific event, in this case, on item added or on item update, right, or on new value received. Think of machine values, and you're getting the temperature pushed every second into your client app, right? So you can see on your mobile phone, on your web page, what the temperature of your machines is, yeah? So connection on item edit, and you're getting past the parameter, and then you can do something in your Angular environment, right? And if you, it, it's, it's best case, or it's best practice, if you build the connection, and then you register an event, and after that, you do it connection style, right? This is the best practice. Um, so you should do, should do it that way. You see it very often, right? So this is how you can just invoke, or when the server sends out this message, you can react to it. But otherwise, on the other side, you can also invoke some messages from uh, from 
the client. So right now, we are connection in both this method and the message we have on the hub. So what this does is, it just calls methods on the hub, passing these parameters, user and message, and broadcasting it to all the other clients, which we just saw on the server side. Right? So that's it. I just want to show you a short demo of that. Is that working? Give it time. Hopefully, I, I prepared a grand demo. Well, there we are. There we are. Okay, so what I did was I have an application here which is separated to client and server, right? So these are completely separated. There's a REST constraint, we have the client side on the one hand and the server side on the other hand. The server side is an experiment core application. Everything what we're doing is, like here you see that startup file. You see something? Uh, we're adding single R here, right? And underneath we're using that single R, we are defining a to-do hub. And if we now take a look at the hub here, you see that it's completely empty. Why is it empty? And the reason why I show you that demo is that the hub methods, which can be invoked from the client, are just one way to broadcast messages. In this case, I built a to-do hub, right? It's just a to-do application which broadcasts the to-do items to all the connected clients. But I want to invoke, or I want to broadcast that to-do items when a post request comes in. I do not want to have one several a request to the hub once again to broadcast it. I want to have it as a side effect. When I post a new item, I want it to be broadcast, right? And what we can do, besides using normal hub functions, we can go in our controller. The controller in ASP.NET is just defining our REST interface. There are the get post with delete methods on, actually. And what we can do, is we can inject the iHub context from that hub. You need that hub again here, it's like this pipeline, so you need that pause. We can inject this iHub context via dependency injection to our controller, and on that hub context, we can then call clients all send async, and then define a method, right? So it's like the same code, but it's not in this <coughs> I just pulled it into the controller. So you have these two techniques to broadcast something. Right? And if a post request comes in, I broadcast to every client item added. And if a put request comes in, I broadcast item updated. Right? So that's server side. On the client side, I just did a normal Angular CLI application. Right? And I did a service which is a singular service where you see exactly what you've seen before. Right? We're just building the connection, we're registering on the events. After that, we are starting the connection, we get back a promise, we can lock up the errors, and so on and so forth. This is everything we, what we do daily. And with that singular service, I just abstracted the complete communication. Now the sun comes out, it's green. So, when I do now start the application, is that? Uh, I will go to. I'm as a server, I do .NET, I'm using the .NET CLI, right? So I'm just starting my application right now, and on the client, I just do an npm start, so it's doing an edge server. So you can see on the left hand side, that we're now listening on HTTPS local 5001, so my API is started, this is Kestrel running, serving my API, and on the right hand side you can see a lot of messages right now, wow. So, compiled successfully, grand. If we now open up a browser, or better, if we open up two browsers, we can go to log loss 4200 without HTTPS. Normally you should use HTTPS, but <coughs> log loss, we don't need that, it's just for the sake of simplicity. You see a demo app, which is just a to-do app, and if I now enter something on the left-hand side, it gets automatically broadcasted, to every other web site open. So we can do hello web lyric. I'm just pressing enter. You can see on the right hand side it just got pushed into the application, right? And if my colleague says, okay, I've done that, right? Just think of that as a as a grocery store list you share with your wife or with your, your husband, right? He said, okay, I just did that, you can press done and it's been automatically updated on the left hand side. Right? So this is how you can just synchronize your application, your clients in real time with AI. 
just be a core angular and same R. Right? So let's here again to our application. So we saw that demo is working. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes working. Right? There you go. There you go, Grant. So before we end this presentation, I want to tell you that you should use Signalar with caution. Why? Because just imagine you're on a site and you're just editing something, right? And somebody pushes changes and broadcasts them just without thinking what you're doing. Then your site changes while you're writing on it. That's not a good thing. If you go to newspaper sites, you often get the pop-up, new messages arrive. And that's a good technique, right? Because the user then has to manually reload, right? Think about you're reading a news, newsletter or you're reading a newspaper, an article, and suddenly the articles change, right? This is not good. As nice and sexy as that is, right? It's not always the best thing to broadcast around like something else, right? Also, do not too much broadcasting from a server. Although the speed is not that problem, it's just that your app feels like this if you're broadcasting around like something. Right? You're just sending events around and nobody knows where those events come from and stuff like that. Right? So with single R, you can take your ASP.NET Core to the next level. Right? It's the opposite direction from I want to get data and you get it. Right? It's just a feature that every API should have in my opinion. Right? You can sync your data between the client but you should use it with caution and the best thing about that whole thing is that compared to the past, right now, we do not need jQuery anymore to do that the separation, to do that, that technique of similar, right? We don't need jQuery, in the past we needed jQuery, now we don't need it anymore. So ASP and Core Singular and Angular are better when used together. So thank you very much, and if you have questions, I'm